Hey guys, ever since I started doing portrait photography, I've been struggling with composition. I think it's one of the most important topic every photographer needs to learn. Through these years, I've been shooting portrait, I've made a lot of mistakes, and I learned a lot. And I come up with this um, tutorial talking about photography composition. I hope you can learn something from this. I use a lot of example in this video and then we'll go through each one that I'll explain how we can do with uh, photography composition. So let's get started. So first thing I would like to point it out is uh, I believe there's a difference between taking picture and photography because taking picture is simply an action, photography is the whole creating process. So there's a huge difference right there. The other thing which I think is more important is um, taking picture is more about you just gotta show your viewers what you see but photography actually get to a different level it actually show people how you feel so between the seeing and feelings which one is more important I believe feeling definitely will impact people more a good example will be if you taste a candy bar and then right away it bring back to your your childhood and then because of the feeling and these and bring up to these memories so be, for that reason mood should always be our ultimate goal when we do photography not just portrait photography this could be any type of photography okay then how can we create that mood and feel in photography then one of the most important two is composition talking about composition is is a very huge topic and they include many different things and people dealing with composition in many different ways and this is my way uh, I'm gonna break it down in many different parts and then I gotta start with the lines the lines and they're like many different type of lines or you can explain we can how to say uh, category lines in different ways and the, the first two difference will be the visible lines and the imagined lines and then of course there are straight line and curved lines so uh, visible lines of course the lines that actually physically physically exist on the image and this is an example you can clearly see the lines on the image and then of course their lines come from the imagination uh, in this image you can see the curve the background then lead to the veil of the the model on the right and then connect to their eyes and then connect to the spot that she's pointing at and then so is uh, this line actually represent it probably could represent one of the viewers like um, the flow uh, looking from one spot moving around then to the other spot so okay so then what are these lines really about is because using these lines because the lines are there are very powerful tools on directing viewers eyes and then that's why they're important so this is an example you can see the tree branches there are visible lines right there and then you follow these lines actually these lines that will pointing your view from the edge of the image right back to the center where your subject is so this is another example. This is the uh, imagined lines. It's same thing, and uh, these lines following through and just pointing viewers' attention to where you want them to. And we talk about lines that it actually it lead viewers, uh, a pointing viewers' view to where you want them to be. And lines are also a very powerful tool on transfer feelings. So let's see some examples. We gotta first see some examples of the street lines. So. so what usually is street lines how we feel about when we see street lines the street lines they usually will uh, represent like strong powerful or sometimes harsh so here's an example of the street lines you can see there are a lot of street lines on this image uh, even models pose is kind of tense and then there's a harsh light there so this this one they actually give you uh, like a a harsh and strong feeling about this image and then this is the next one uh, you can see there are a lot of street lines in this image as well uh, so you can see there's a, the, the leading lines of the couch and then there are the shadows and they are very contrasty and yeah, you can see these lines pointing viewers attention to the subject they also add the feeling to the image 
So is this one, you can see there's a lot of street lines. So compare with street lines, we got curve lines. And the curve lines on the other side, it usually represents soft harmony or elegant. Uh, let's see some examples. So you can see on this image, you almost cannot see a single street line. They have, all the lines are curved lines. And there's another one. So what I want you to do is like you, you look at this image and then trying to trying to feel it. See these curve lines? Okay, there's another one. Lots of curve lines on this one as well. Okay. So then we now we saw some examples between straight lines and curve lines, and then we kind of we talk about the visible lines and the imaginal lines. So then let's see some examples of how lines can dramatically change the mood of whole scene. So between this image and this image, without I pointing out, you know exactly which one is a curve line, which one is a straight line. I, mean, I believe you can clearly feel that the the difference between the mood between these two images, I mean on this one, every single line is pretty much the curved lines, and then her pose and the lighting, everything, it just transferred to soft, elegant feeling. And this one is like very intense, very dramatic. I even tilt the image on purple just to make the, the, the scene even more how to say intimidating intimidating and her pose and her expression and the way she holds a sword this is a street sword and like a, like a tons of street lines so the feeling between these two images is very very different and then what what helped to transfer that feeling are the lines of course lines are not the only one but yeah lines are one of the most powerful one probably the most powerful one uh, between these two examples. Then I see more. So uh, the previous example there are like, a, these are from two different photo shoot apparently, and two different locations. How about we change the mood using lines within the same photo shoot and maybe just uh, the, the shooting location, maybe just like two, three feet away from each other. So let's take a look, uh, take a look at this example. So you can see, uh, well, yeah, the, we, we, we see three lines there, the, the, the window, right? And then the heat over there, and then, but this is actually more of working as the lighting, and then the heat, the window, and the chair over there is actually give you more of the warm feeling, relaxed feeling, right? And then talking about the lines, actually what's more, Book webs more attention from the viewer at this mirror at the back. This is like a large mirror, curved round mirror, and also that pen right there. And then the way she's holding the teacup, right? And uh, her outfit. And all these just give us a feeling of like very relaxed, right? Maybe this is like a early in the morning and she's at home and then enjoying a cup of tea, you know, that type of feeling. And then, okay, so let's take a look at the second image. Now the curved mirror are gone and the teacup are gone. And then you can see these two window frame on each both side of the image pointing down and like very strong street lines and she's holding a cigarette. It's very straight and long as well, and her expression is very intense too. So you can see the feeling is completely and completely changed. And then these two shots is basically uh, just like two, three feet from each other. By changing your camera angle, by changing the props, you can dramatically change the feeling or the mood of the image. Okay, let's see the next example. So this we saw this um, picture previously, but uh, okay, this is an example of using the street line. Let's take a look at the next one. So you, uh, you can see here, the chair that she's sitting on is just like a large curved lines. And this large curved lines, plus the softer lighting, the warm color, everything, is transfer a completely different feeling between these two pictures. 
Now that I can see on this first image, I even use a harsh light. What I mean by harsh light is it's just like I leave more shadow on her face. And then the straight lines, the shadow, the little straight lines, like, and then very high contrasty, it just make the whole image more intense. But this one is very, very soft and relaxed. Yeah, so again, so these two images, you can even from this image, you can see the chair in the background, and then she just like walk over there, sit on that chair, and then took this shot. Yeah, well, this is a color one, this is a black and white one. But all these things are just like help to build the mood you want people to feel, right? Okay, other than playing with the lines, what else we can do for composition? In part two, we'll cover more composition techniques and then go through more examples. There really are a lot more we can do for composition. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can learn something from it. And stay tuned, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.